I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Somalia to introduce an address by the head of state. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly, I have the great honor and privilege to introduce the pre-recorded statement by my president, His Excellency Mohammed Abdullahi Mohammed Farmajo, the President of the Federal Republic of Somalia. Thank you. Honorable President of the Assembly, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor and privilege to address you all on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. On this special 75th anniversary of our multilateral global union for peace, progress and prosperity, it's fundamental to recommit ourselves to the UN Charter and its broad-based consensus on effective cooperation for common sustainable international development. Consensus, cooperation, and targeted common action have never been more important than at this time where the, where the world is challenged politically, socially, and economically by the COVID-19 health pandemic. In assessing the way forward to achieving the agreed sustainable development goals by 2030, in the midst of the global COVID-19 pandemic. We must also re-examine the future we all want and the United Nations we need to attain it. COVID-19 has been a devastating lesson and the loudest possible wake-up call in the need for global cooperation, effective partnership, and the firm commitment to multilateralism to confront it together. COVID-19 recognizes no borders nationality, gender, or economic status of nations or, individual, or, or individuals, we are all equally victims. Therefore, a unifying solution must be found to protect every human being from it. In Somalia, our government and people have worked closely together to mitigate the worst effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Like most governments across the world, we prioritize the health of our citizens and did as much as possible to save lives. Through direct medical provision and consistent, updated and effective public health information, our government did its utmost to keep our population as safe as possible. COVID-19 cases, which were rising quickly at the early stage of pandemic have fallen steadily as a result of our government's swift actions. Again, this successful response would not have been possible without the effective partnership between our government, citizens, and international partners. I wanted to pay special tribute to all of our courageous and dutiful health personnel who risked their lives to save others. I also recognize the patience and contribution of the Somali private sectors, which worked with the government to keep the economy functioning and providing vital services to the Somali people at the most critical hour of need. Yet, the success of our common efforts in Somalia does not mean that we are unscattered. According to, the official statistic, according to official statistics, over 3,000 Somalis were infected by the virus and around 100 tragically lost their lives as a result. Many more who were diagnosed had to live with the pain and the suffering of COVID-19 and others still remain vulnerable given the weakness of Somalis of a stretched health system and infrastructure. Given the grave health challenges posed to the world, in particular the most vulnerable nations like Somalia, I feel confident that with a greater public health collaboration, information sharing, and equitable distribution of the potential COVID-19 health treatments currently in development, 
we can permanently reverse the deadly impact of the virus for every human being on the planet. This is the only way we can secure our common future, and therefore it's must that we as a community of nations reaffirm our collective commitment to multilateralism and confront COVID-19 through effective and coordinated multilateral action. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, across the world, economies of all sizes have been severely impacted by COVID-19 with the most vulnerable affected the most. In Somalia, like everywhere else in the world, we are challenged by a painful contraction of the economy, job losses, and the need to continue investing in our essential basic public services to protect our citizens from the deadly virus. You can, all, you can all appreciate this is a huge task for, for a recovering post-conflict state like Somalia, but our government has and will remain steadfast in rising and responding to the diverse challenges, challenges that lay ahead. Our government's economic policy response to COVID-19 has once again been to put our people first with tax relief for most key stable food items. Now hoping that the worst is behind us, we are cautiously starting to open up our economy to ensure the normal life can resume for our people. However, we also understand the huge challenge that build back better, stronger, and more equitable from the COVID-19 impact will be for Somalia. In reiterating the importance of confronting COVID-19 through effective multilateral action, I want to recognize the enabling econo economic and financial support provided to the Somali federal government to mitigate the worst of COVID-19 economic pressure by the international financial institutions and many other multilateral institutions after Somalia successfully reached the decision point and attained debt relief from many of its major international creditors. As we progress towards achieving debt cancellation through our enabling economic reforms, we remain cognizant that Somali's economic future and the prosperity of its people are closely interlinked with that of the rest of the world. In this regard, the future we want in Somalia is one which promotes greater partnership for international trade, enhancing foreign direct investment in key productive sector, which has the potential to feed the world and the development of human capital to create future opportunities for us all. The United Nations we need is an, in, is an inclusive global multilateral platform for propelling not just the ideas and aspirations of change, but their realization as well. COVID-19 has economically challenged us. And if the sustainable development goals are to ever be realized, the world must recover better for all and together. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Global crises like the COVID-19 pandemic provide both an opportunity for renewal and a challenge to overcome. We have seen the devastating health and economic impact of the virus, and we are all feeling and living with a painful result. No nation, no matter how well resourced, is immune. Yet, despite our, our common suffering and pain, I'm fearful that COVID-19 has and will continue to exacerbate the already existing gulf between the developed and developing and fragile states that make up the UN family. This is something that must be avoided at all costs as a tackling today's major global challenges, including insecurity, climate change, 
poverty and the increasing inequality, which is the driver of much division and discontent across the world, depend on effective cooperation and multilateral actions which bring, which bring the sustainable development goals to fruition. Somalia is working through and with the UN to create a better future for Somalia and the world. We are taking the lead in delivering development to our people and working with our valuable international partners to ensure we rebuild a domestic, inclusive, democratic, inclusive, and economically uh, pros prosperous Somalia. Despite the challenge of COVID-19, we are still working hard to undertake inclusive national elections where the Somali people can determine their future. We are firmly committed to promoting and stealing a strong tradition of democracy and accountable governance, governance which, which services the Somali people first and foremost. We are also successfully defeating the menace of global terrorism with the effort of our brave armed forces in collaboration with AMSOM and other international partners to make the world a safer, safer place. I'm confident with our government's efforts and continued support of our important international partners. Somalia will not only confront COVID-19, but it will, it will contribute positively to the multilateral effort required to make the world a better, more resilient, and equal place for all. Looking forward, it's fundamental that we fully realize the sustainable development goals for each and every citizens, for every citizen of this world. We cannot afford to leave anyone behind. This means that the United Nations will also have to improve further, innovate faster, and deliver better for the most fragile nations and vulnerable communities. The United Nations can do this by supporting national and personal development through assisting and strengthening national institution framework, systems, knowledge transfer, and investment in human capital. These are real long-term investment that will actually contribute to prosperity, alleviation, and creation of opportunity for all. In conclusion, the United Nations and the Family of Nations which comprises its membership, must work together through renewed partnership to confront COVID-19. We must also continue to engage each other positively to create the inclusive and prosperous future we want with and through the United Nations we need. In this regard, we in Somalia reaffirm our commitment to multilateralism to overcome all common obstacles and to capitalize on every opportunity to create a better, safer, and equal world. I thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Federal Republic of Somalia for the statement just made. I now give the